Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the last section, we talked about the cardiovascular system. Today, we'll turn our attention to the immune system. How your body defends itself against foreign invaders. With that said, now let's get started. But before we get started, please understand that today is a brief discussion. If you want a more detailed discussion, check my physiology playlist. What is immunity? It's the ability of your body to resist microorganisms or toxins. We have two types of immunity, innate or non-specific and acquired or specific. Non-specific doesn't learn, doesn't care, such as the acid in your stomach. Do you think the acid in your stomach cares whether what's inside is bacteria, virus, fungus or parasite? No, it does not. Do you think the acid cares if this is the primary exposure or the secondary exposure to the invader? Heck no. However, in acquired, specific or adaptive immunity, of course we care about the type of the organism. There is a specific response for every organism. And of course we care whether this is the first exposure or the second encounter with the same dofus. Before we dig deeper, let me remind you that your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma is water and proteins. Proteins are albumin and globulin. Globulins are alpha, beta or gamma globulins. These are huge because these are your immunoglobulins or antibodies. Antibodies against whom? against foreign invaders. You also have cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. When it comes to immunity, which one do we care about? The white blood cells. Here are the red blood cells, here are the platelets, and everything else is the white blood cells. All of them, by the way, come from the bone marrow, pluripotent stem cells. When it comes to immunity, we focus on the white blood cells. Your white blood cells are more concerned with the innate immunity, non-specific immunity, except the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes are concerned with your adaptive, acquired, specific immunity. We have two types of lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes. Please understand that B lymphocytes will become plasma cells when they grow up. And when they become plasma cells, they will secrete antibodies, which are immunoglobulins, which are gamma globulins, part of your plasma proteins. Your plasma has proteins, albumins, globulins, fibrinogen, prothrombin, and others. All your antibodies are gamma globulins. Here's your lovely plasma. It has water, it has inorganic substances, organic substances, and gases. We care about this right now. Your globulins are either alpha-1, alpha-2, beta, or gamma. Your antibodies are here, gamma globulin, a famous exam question. What are these antibodies? You have five types, IgG, IgM, IgA, IgD, IgE. IgM is concerned with the first response. The first time you saw a specific bacteria is going to trigger an IgM response from your body. Also remember that IgM is big. Contrast that with IgG antibodies. They are small, that's why they can cross the placenta, and they are concerned with the secondary response to the bacteria. How about IgA? It's in the mucosa because it leaves the blood and ascends to the mucous membrane, such as the mucus in your nose, mucous membrane in your mouth, anal cavity, vaginal canal, etc. IgE is ew, allergy, ew, parasites, ew, anaphylaxis, double ew. Now let's dig deeper into the difference between innate or non-specific immunity and adaptive or acquired or specific immunity. Immunity, innate and acquired. Innate, you're born with it, non-specific, less potent, present at birth, no memory, doesn't care whether this is the first encounter or the second encounter with the same organism. It responds to foreign invaders all the same, like the acid in your stomach. It's just an acid, it burns stuff, regardless of the nature of the stuff. Next is the adaptive immunity, the acquired immunity. You have to learn it. No one is born a soldier. No one is born a pilot or a co-pilot for that matter. For this, you need specificity. You have to acquire it. You have to learn it. How do I learn it? from memory, from experience. Experience with what? With previous encounter with the same freaking antigen or the same invader. It is specific, that's why it's more potent, 
develops after birth, it takes time and responds differently depending on the invader. Different organisms require different responses. It is very specific. The heroes here are the lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Innate immunity is easy. Let's talk about the adaptive or acquired immunity. We have four types, naturally acquired passive, naturally acquired active, artificial passive, artificial active. What do you mean by naturally acquired adaptive immunity that happens to be passive? Basically, you're breastfeeding. Yeah, your mother has IgA antibodies. She's giving you her own antibodies. You didn't make them. You didn't learn anything. These are preformed antibodies from the mother. You are being passive. You didn't do anything. And it's also natural. You didn't go to the doctor for that. It's natural. How about natural active acquired immunity? This is where you get infection. Oh, so I'm developing my memory after an encounter with a specific organism. That's true. In this case, you're active. You're actually fighting the infection. How about artificially acquired? Well, it is your doctor's job. Could be passive if the doctor gave you an anti-serum, which is a serum containing antibody. Or could be active if the doctor gave you vaccines. Here's the innate immunity. Non-specific, innate, very quick response. Component, mechanical and chemical barriers, like the acid in your stomach, the epithelium in your nose, etc. Non-specific cell defenses, such as neutrophils, eosinophils, macrophages, natural killer cells. All of these are innate. However, the lymphocytes are adaptive or acquired. The complement, the interferons, the lysosomes, the acute phase reactions, all of these are parts of the innate system. The complement could be considered as a bridge between the innate immunity and the acquired immunity. What are these? These are my white blood cells, eosinophils, neutrophils, basophils, lymphocytes, monocytes. These three together are called granulocytes. These two are non-granulocytes. Neutrophils are the most abundant followed by lymphocytes. What's the function of neutrophils? Fight against bacteria. These are the cells of acute inflammation and pus formation. Lymphocytes fight against viruses, fungi. These are the cells of chronic inflammation. Monocytes are the same as macrophages. When they are in the blood, they are called monocyte. When they are in the tissue, they're called macrophages and they eat stuff. Hashtag phagocytosis. Eosinophils is for parasites and allergies in eu. Basophils secrete histamine, also allergy. When they are in the blood, they are basophils. When they are in the tissue, they are called mast cells. So basically, they are the same thing. Similarly, monocytes in the blood are equivalent to macrophages in the tissue, equivalent to Kupfer cells in the liver, which is equivalent to microglia in your brain. What's that? That's your antibody. Who secreted it? Plasma cell, which came from B lymphocytes, which came from the bone marrow. Please memorize the sequence of events. Don't forget this antibody could be IgM, IgA, IgG, IgE, or IgD. Ig stand for immunoglobulin, of course. So B lymphocytes, when they mature, they can become memory B cell to remember the previous exposure or plasma cell so that they can secrete antibodies, which are gamma globulins or immunoglobulins. And we have five subtypes. Complement system. Why do you call it complement system? Because it complements the ability of the antibody to perform its function. Basically, we're trying to destroy the bacteria. We have three pathways because we have three mechanisms, but the end result is the same destruction of the bacteria via the something called MAC, membrane attack complex, and the MAC will attack the bacteria, also known as the terminal complement complex. For example, here is the antigen, which is the foreign invader, and here is the antibody. Together, they make an antigen antibody complex. Who's going to complement the antibody's job? The complement system, which always ends up with the MAC, which will attack the bacteria. Another example is the alternative pathway of the complement, same thing, MAC, which will attack the bacteria. For a more detailed discussion, I have a video called the complement system and it's available in my physiology playlist. What happens after we activate the complement? Agglutination, what does that mean? Get the bacteria close together. Also, you can agglutinate the antigen and antibody together. And then make the bacteria tasty. Why do you make it tasty? 
because I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna enjoy myself. This is called opsonization by a protein known as opsonin. Then get the neutrophils out of the vessel by chemotaxis and then destroy the bacteria perforated by perforin, neutralize the toxins of the virus and release histamine from mast cells. All of this thanks to complement activation. It's not just the MAC, we have other functions. Wild blood cells are your military. Most of them are innate, except lymphocyte, which are adaptive. As you remember, white blood cells are nucleated, unlike red blood cells, which have no nucleus, unlike platelets, which are not even cells. Here is a lovely test tube containing your blood. Red blood cells are here, plasma is here, the buffy coat contains white blood cells and platelets. Acute inflammation, oh, neutrophils are gonna help you. How about chronic inflammation? This is the land of lymphocytes. What are the cardinal signs of acute inflammation, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function? Why does this happen? Because during acute inflammation, you vasodilate. Oh, unlike primary hemostasis or blood clotting, where you start by vasoconstriction. Oh yeah, well, which makes sense because here I was trying to minimize blood loss, so I better vasoconstrict. But here I would like the neutrophils to be pushed out of the vessel into the interstitial space to fight bacteria, so I better vasodilate. And when you vasodilate, what do you get? Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Who attracted the neutrophils from within the blood vessel to the interstitial space where the bacteria belongs? Neutrophil chemotactic factors. Neutrophils keep rolling, 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 marginating, diapedesis, which means false feet. They acquire false feet like this. And then they move chemotaxis, someone attracts them. And then they opsonize the bacteria, make it tasty, and then eat it. These are the explanations of redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function, the cardinal signs of acute inflammation. So today we compare between innate and adaptive immunity. In the next video, we'll compare between primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs. Why do you call them lymphoid? Because this is where the lymphocytes live. If you like this video, you will adore my autonomic pharmacology course available at medicosisperfectgenetics.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Nandos, where medicine makes perfect sense.